Good morning. Glad to have you with us. These are unusual times, unusual circumstances. We're going to broadcast the service live this morning. There's just four of us here and we're all spread out. I can guarantee you that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you've given us a way to be able to continue to spread your word. We pray, Lord God, blessings upon all of those within the sound of our voice. Heavenly Father, we pray for this service. I pray, Lord God, that you give me your words and that you give us all hearts receptive to that word. Father God, we give you all glory and honor in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join in song this morning. are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. You know, we've recorded and broadcast these services many times over the past year, and I always said I would never do live because I never ever trust myself with a live broadcast because I never know exactly what I come out, and I have to make sure that what comes out is God and not me. I can tell you this, if it's wisdom, it's God. If it's foolish, it's me. But you know, I've been watching the news, and I watch... Predominantly, I watch Sky News, which comes out of Europe. And we're seeing that they're running about four weeks or so ahead of us. But there are a lot of words that keep popping up over and over again outside of the Word of God. And we looked this morning in Sunday school for those that were able to watch. And you can watch it recorded as well. But in there was Jesus was in the wilderness and tempted. And of course, the famous scripture says that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So of all the words we're hearing, the words we should really hearken to is the Word of God. But there's a lot of words you're hearing on the news. Words you never thought you'd hear in this most blessed of countries. In the United States, the breadbasket of the world. You're hearing the words hoarding, rationing. People are talking about price gouging. Outside of most of the major incidents which we may remember, Katrina, or even those that go back to World War II, we've never known of rationing. We've never seen hoarding like this take place. We've never experienced anything like this. I don't want to focus on the virus this morning. I want to focus instead upon the cure, which is Christ Jesus. But I do want to let you know and understand this virus is not a hurricane. A hurricane affects a region. It comes and it goes or aggravated for a few days. Or if it's a single region like New Orleans, it's affected for years, but it doesn't affect the entire nation. This affects the entire nation. This virus isn't like a war. It's not an enemy that we can see. It's not a visible enemy. It's not something that we can see that we're ever going to have a peace treaty signed. It's an entirely different scenario. You know, those of us who are Christians that still come together and proclaim the name of Christ find ourselves in a situation that instead of keeping everything to ourselves, we must find a way to give even more, even in these circumstances. To be able to give abundantly, as the scripture says. We read earlier in 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7. It said, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We as a church must be the light that shines in the darkness. We must be what stands upon this land to see that there is hope. But remember, we aren't the light. The scriptures go on and says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are just that. We are jars of clay. We're earthen vessels, as the scriptures say. But yet into us, God put this treasure, which is himself, which is Christ Jesus. 
He chose us to be able to be the ones that would spread his word. We're simply the messengers. We're the bearers of light. What is the light? What is this treasure that we, that we read about here in Corinthians? What is this that we have in our heart that we're to spread with everyone else? What is this treasure that instead of hoarding, we're to share? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. I'm going to read about five or six different scriptures here. But Matthew 4, 16 says, The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. We read that often at Christmas, but you know what? Every day is a fact that we should recognize the fact that Christ has come here and appeared to us, and He is the light. Every morning when I walk into this church myself in the same glasses above me, I walk in those back doors, and every time I say the same thing, Yea, Lord, we greet Thee. I realize that's a Christmas song, but it reminds me so much of the fact that He's coming to our lives. Christ himself said this as well in John chapter 1, verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness was not overcome it. Most importantly, John 8, 12. Remember this. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How can we keep this light, Jesus, hidden? How can we keep it in our hearts and not spread it to others? Now is the time that before, uh, greater than any other, that we're the ones to be able to bring this, this source of hope and peace. And others are going to begin to ask you, how do you have a peace in this situation? What's your secret? What is your treasure in your jars of clay? And that treasure is Christ Jesus. It's the knowledge of Him. Jesus Himself told us this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 through 16. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds, but most importantly, it ends, and glorify your Father in heaven. God is giving you a peace, a radiance about you for only one reason. That's for others to see it and ask, what is your secret? Don't keep the light hidden under a basket. What he said here, share it with them. We're to be lampstands. You know, I begin to look, this camera sits upon a tripod and it sits up there. And what it's doing is it is sharing with the whole world. Last week's videos were went out to over 55,000 people. We've got over 20,000 who have watched the videos. The pamphlet that went out last week as part of the message has been seen and read by over 30,000 people. Imagine how God can use us. And it's not me. You can tell with about two minutes into this message that it's not me. It's light. It's God. It's Him. It's His truth and it's Word. It is not me. But you know what? That is within every one of us. And we all must share that. We all have to be lampstands. You know, there's a world out there that's desperate for what you have. And when I say that, I'm not talking about your toilet paper and your hand sanitizer or your loaf of bread or whatever the crisis du jour is today, if you have a mask hidden away, that's not what they're so desperate for. They're desperate for the fact that you have Christ within you. Even if they don't know what that name Christ is, they know that there's something different within you. They want the peace that you have. When the whole world is going in a thousand different directions, they want that peace that you have. It's We know it's what the scripture calls it's the peace that passes all understanding. Which means there's no way in my limited knowledge I could ever explain it to you other than to go to Scripture. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. This is the New Living Translation, which I love the way this one reads. And it says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need for this reason. Watch how the Scripture finishes. And plenty left over to share with others. Again, he's not talking about the things in your pantry. He's talking about the peace that you have. He's talking about the fact that you understand God's grace. You understand that that's all we need is God's grace and God's love and God's mercy. We as Christians have so much of that within us that it's actually bursting out of the seams. We have no choice but to have to share it. But how many times in the past, in our years, we may have been saved 20, 30, 40 years, or we've kept it inside? Now is the time when we realize that we need to share that with those around us. We've never seen people as anxious as they are right now. We've never seen a scenario like this in the history. 
Now is the time for you to share that. To share his love, to share his grace, to share his mercy, and most importantly, share his salvation. That's when the scripture talks about that everything we see here is temporary. But the solution is eternal. And that only comes to a life with Christ, an eternity with Christ. His love, His grace, His mercy, and His salvation. Please don't hoard those. Give those to all around you. God Himself does not ration this. God has never said, I'll give you enough mercy, I'm through. It's not you can have two packs of toilet paper. You can have one thing of sanitizer. God doesn't do that with His grace and His mercy. How many times have we come to the altar, but yet we always receive? He's never told us, no, my stores are closed. He's never told us, my shelves are empty. He's always just told us, come. Jesus himself says in John chapter 10, verse 10, this is the Amplified Version. It says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I come that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance, so full that it overflows. If you have Christ fully within you, then you have no option but to see Christ overflow outside of you. Others around you have to know that you have Christ. It's just like in the hurricanes when the electricity goes out. You can drive down the road and you know who's got a generator. Let me tell you, in this crisis, those that you know, they're going to go down the road. They're going to see you on Facebook. They're going to hear you on the phone. And they're going to know in your voice that you know what? You have a power source. You have a generator within you. And it's never going to run out of fuel. Remember also what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Pressed down, shaken together. To make room for more. Running over. Poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Now understand that the prosperity gospel has stolen that scripture. They think it's all about money, all about money, all about money. Never read a scripture unless you go and read the scripture before it. Because this has nothing to do with the greedy desire to get money. Because verse 6, chapter 30, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 37 tells us what we are to give and what we are not to give. Verse 37 says, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others. Or will all come back against you? Forgive others and you will be forgiven. We are freely to give forgiveness. We are not to give judgment. We are not to give condemnation. Especially now. Because you know what? People are in need. No one that comes to you for prayer, no one that comes to these altars needs to hear about how they should have avoided the sin that's in their lives. No one needs to be told, you know what, you should have made a better, you should have lived a better life. You should have made better decisions. When they come to this altar, I never tell them that. When they come to you and they're broken, you should never tell them that, look, it's a consequence of your decisions. They don't need to hear that. Never give them that. You know what? The sick that are coming, we hear more and more that we know personally three in the last 24 hours that are infected. You know what the sick don't need? They do not need to hear from you that they should have stayed at home. They should have washed their hands more. They don't need to hear from you, well, you should have went to the grocery store two weeks ago. That's not what they need to hear. That's not the thing that you do to satisfy the hungry. Is to say, you should have taken care of yourself. You know what? Whenever people over the next few weeks and months are found themselves out of work and broke, they don't need to hear from you. You know what? You should have saved more. You shouldn't have bought that new car. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. That's the thing that they do not need to hear. You know what they need to hear? They need to hear Jesus. Give them Jesus. How do we do that? How do we give Jesus? We know how to hand out toilet paper and bread, but how do we give them Jesus? I always go back to Jesus himself, the source. In Matthew 25, Jesus said this, verse 34. Come, you are blessed by my Father. 
Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Verse 40, he says, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brother, you did it to me. This building that we often call the church, you know what this is? This is just a rest stop. This is a place for us to be able to come in and to be able to recharge. But you know what? This is not where the work of the church takes place. We have the chance for the first time in my life as a Christian to be able to hit the reset button and say, you know what? We're going to more closely align with the first century church. The ones that sat at the feet of Jesus and how they did church, for lack of a better term, to make church into a verb. How are we going to church going forward? You know what they had? They had a church without walls. A church that impacts the lives of those in the communities. You know what you need to do? You need to call your neighbors. You need to pack up care boxes, spray everything down, spray the box down, get everything as kosher as you can, leave a note, I cleaned all these items, I washed them, leave them on their doorsteps. You know what we don't need to do? We don't need to hoard or ration the gift that's been given to us. And again, I'm not talking about just the physical things. I'm talking about the gift of compassion. You realize that how hard it is for me to love everyone? But do you know I have no other option? I can't pick and choose who I love. Some people have said that about a lot of different things. But if you talk about heart to heart, and the fact of what God's put on my heart and the people in this congregation, the people in the community, I have no other choice but to have to love them. You know why? Because I realize what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. We're about to get a big mural painted downtown that says, For God so loved the world. But you know what? Instead of there, I want you to be able, we always have said in the past, for God so loved Frank, so God so loved Shelby. But you know what? I want you instead to be able to put in there your own name. For Billy so loved his neighbor that he sent a roll of toilet paper. Billy so loved his sister that he called and checked on her. Billy so loved his employees that he sent them texts with scriptures and prayers to encourage them. For, God, for Billy so loved a stranger that he shared with him the saving message of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, our bodies, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We're afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, we're confused, but you know what? We're not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're struck down, but you know what? We're not destroyed. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer body is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporary. But the things that are unseen are eternal. There's nothing I can pass my eye on today that has any eternal merit except for Christ. I want to close this morning. I want to close with a prayer. But I want to close with Paul's prayer. It's found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. As grace plays, this is our time to be able to come to the altar. Wherever you may be is your altar, in your car, at your house, at your kitchen table. That's your altar. 
come to the altar. Bring unto God your joys and your concerns. And you know what? Don't forget to share those with us. Either via Facebook messaging, send me a text, however it needs to be. Make sure we know that what God is doing for you and specifically what you need for your family. Don't ever, ever put yourself in a situation of needing something and not letting someone know. Let us be the church to you. Blessings upon you all.